What also a lot of people don't know, and you don't fucking know this either, is boom. Come in, we started. Close the door. We started, Paul. Polly. Polly Shore is here today. Welcome to Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. This is, this is your daughter. Jacqueline Schultz, What's his daughter. daughter. Hi. Are you videotaping? Are you vi he's Are you just blocking you, the you camera. Were this, you were this little. I was little. tiny. It was at the beach. Yeah. So I got to say bye to everyone because we just did the, uh, the, the tour. We did a tour. So say goodbye. We're gonna do goodbye. Now we're doing a podcast. Amazing. Can you, what's the weasel. It's a, it's a weasel. Do you know how, why the, we put a weasel up there, Polly? Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to take this whole thing in. It's very, um, I, I move mean, the I mic there. I, you? Just, I thought I was just coming into, I thought I was just, I like his hat. It says yeasty boys. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was just, I thought I was just coming into a, um, just a, like a room. This is a room. We were gonna, we gonna just do your podcast. I That's didn't know what it, it was is. Like a fucking Disneyland of multimedia. I mean, this like I'm like just trying to take it in. It's crazy. <laughs> the mic close. It's not crazy. Well, it's for me it is. I didn't know that this was what I was walking. Well, you know what? It is just a room in a building. No, but dude. you know what? He has the same feeling. Probably not as as awe inspiring as when I first walked in. When I first saw you and walked into the world that you come from. Mm. That was how I felt. I could not believe I was seeing, and just to uh, reiterate, so <clears throat> around 77 or 78, I came down to California. She went, wasn't born. Mm -mm. No. I was born in 84. Yeah, she's like, a, she's like an adult. Like, yeah. You're telling me this is your daughter, and I've known you since the 1970s. Yes. So she wasn't around when I knew you. So You're when you amazing. tell me this is your daughter, yeah. it's fucking weird. It's just a little sperm swimming around in my dad's testicles. It's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, he didn't on. see that either. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your... I don't like when you refer to yourself as my sperm. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Please. Okay. So, uh, and I have another daughter too. You've met all my kids, but you don't remember because they were kids. But you were, I came down here at what was, I believe, the golden age of stand-up comedy. It was Mitzi Shore who owned your, your, uh, your mother, who owned the comedy store. That was the epicenter of everything that anybody has ever experienced in comedy from multi-generations. I mean, I came down here and I saw Richard Pryor and, and David Letterman was just a host and people were lined up around the corner on Sunset Boulevard in this club. The comedy store was, uh, which he ended, ended up owning was, even before that was Ciro's, which was uh, in the heyday of Hollywood was the, the supper club of the stars. Mm -hmm. And I remember showing up there and seeing everybody I'd seen on TV and Robin Williams and Steve Martin and um, R Richard Pryor and uh, George Car did I say George Carlin already? No, no. Uh, yeah, he was there. Yeah, yeah. George Red Red, Red Fox, Red was there. Fox, yeah, yeah. everybody, and and they were lined up. And then it was the seventies, so uh, break dancing was all the rage, and there was always this little kid mm. on cardboard boxes mm. that would be spinning around on his head on in in the in the lines yeah. when the people were lined yeah, up. Yeah, I was uh, I was friends with uh, Sugar Pop. I don't know who Sugar Pop is. <laughs> Sugar Pop was, uh, I don't know if you remember the old Michael Jackson videos and Lionel Richie videos and Tony Braxton and James Brown. He was the lead dancer. So on, Sugar, what, on what video? Every, uh, uh, it was uh, the Michael Jackson thriller video. He was one of the dancers, pop locking, and he was in, he Put would up go the into thriller a, video. And can you point yeah, out which yeah, one yeah, he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was also uh, uh, also uh, in with Shabadoo. He was um, I know with, Shabadoo. Yeah, with Lionel Richie. So he was the lead dancer in that. So Sugar Pop, I met when I was you know in tenth grade, probably ninth or tenth grade, and he used to come over to my house with the Booyah tribe. The Booyah tribe was his cousins, these gnarly Samoans, and they used to come to my house and teach me how to pop lock and break dance. Wait, at, you, so at you had house, at my house yeah. the lead singer from no, the, lead the lead dancer, dancer not yeah. the lead singer, the lead dancer from Thriller, Thriller video. Yeah, you he met. He actually him. taught Michael Jackson how to moonwalk. Are you serious? No, this guy. Yeah, Sugar Pop was is the which is guy, the best pop locker. Which well, guy I got to see when he's doing this shit. Yeah, when he's doing this stuff, when he's going around the camera. I mean, he's in this. I can't see which one he is. So what is it better? Can you see him better on the Lionel Richie one? No, I could see him in this one, but it's just, it's a later part of the video. Okay. We so yeah, he's one of those guys. 
Did he? He's one he, of these guys. Yeah, he's one of these guys. So okay, we just take. It doesn't matter. So which yeah, one he's he is. one. Yeah, he's one of the guys. So he was literally the best pop locker, the best pop locker in the West Coast. So he taught you know Lionel. He was Where do on you Lionel. meet him? I met him uh, through my friend. There he is, right there. Which the one? Middle, the middle guy, right in the middle. That's oh. him. That's Sugar Pop, aka Steven De Silva. Yeah, is so he I still met alive? Him. Yeah, he's still alive. So I met him through Donovan Leach and uh, Mike Messick, who used to work at Flips of uh, Hollywood, which is on Melrose. It was Flips a or Flippers. Flips. It was, was it, a, it was a clothing clothing place on Melrose, and uh, Mike and Donovan, who went to Hollywood High. They introduced me to uh, Steven, a.k.a. Sugar Pop. And, and he then, used to taught me. He, he would go to my back. And he used to come over to the house and bring linoleum. And he had all these guys from the... If you Google Booyah Tribe. Booyah Bo Tribe? Booyah Tribe. Yeah, Booyah Tribe. Google Booyah Tribe. How do you and spell these, Booyah Tribe? Sh it'll pop up. Booyah Tribe. Booyah. There you go. So put images. Or go to images. So yeah, these guys. Yeah. So go get a... Yeah. So you can see how gnarly they are. They look like prisoners. Right. Yeah. So and you were in 10th grade and all these guys would come over to, to mom's house. Yeah. And put the, my mom would be like, what the fuck is going on? They're going to kill us. You know, because I wouldn't, because you, you, you usually ask your parents if you could bring your fucking friends over. Right, mom, can my friend Stevie come over? But I never even asked my mom if the Booyah tribe and, and here, click them, click them big. So the audience click on see. one, click on one big shit. Yeah, just one right, big, there, yeah, right there. Yeah. So these guys would hang out in my back. Zoom in and make that the whole, the whole yeah. thing so we can see that. Yeah. There we go. So those, that was Donald and, and Charlie, Charlie. And they taught me how to pop lock. Which and, guy is the main guy? Stevie. Uh, no, Steve De Silva. These were his cousins. Oh, these are his cousins. Yeah. These so are, these so guys the guy would Donald show up at your mom's house with linoleum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And my mom would be in there and she'd look through the window and go, what the f They're going to kill us. I'm like, mom, shut the fuck up. They're teaching me how to spin on my head. Mom, shut the fuck up. They're teaching me how to spin <laughs> on my head. That's pretty much what I would say. I like they're teaching me how to break. And they did. You want to see me break dance? Can you put some music on or what? Yeah. Don't you need linoleum? No, I'll just do it myself. So I'll just do me, myself. Can we get a shot? Wait, let's make sure that the camera pulls out. Are we are we getting a shot? Come on, get a fucking shot, Richie. Wake this shit up. <laughs> Can you play some, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, 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 is there any way to play some? We're on headsets. Well, we're on headsets. Okay, but maybe you can hold music. Yeah. Can, you do some? can, can, we can you play music on your phone? I can play music on the phone. On the phone. What should we, like just a. Yeah, just play some old so, school. Just a rhythm. Okay. Here we go. You know what I mean? so wait, 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 wait. Just wait a second. Okay. Don't so start dancing yet. What? Royal yeah, royalty free. What? Yeah, royalty free. Royalty free hip hop. Wow. Yeah, the, so people are guys, getting a behind the scenes. Can I just say to the audience, you are about to listen to royalty free music, which means I'm not paying for it. Yeah, yeah. But dude, is this part of the hologram? What the fuck's going on? You're confusing me. I'm not. Here we go. No, no I just don't want to be ad. demonetized on YouTube. This is an ad. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait. Not yet. Not not yet. Hang on. Your daughter, dude, she might fall in love with my body, bro. Okay. Is that cool? I don't know. She's you married. Know. You got to ask her husband now. That was in good. A while, but in it was plus amazing. Gay jazz, I think. Well, it's the music. I don't know. I think I was thinking about calling my husband and breaking up with him right That's now. That's what I'm saying. It's all happening, bro. Uh -huh. So yeah. So these guys, you know, <laughs> 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 Chinese. Listen, Chinese. Listen. So Chinese. Chinese. Everyone's Chinese to me. That's just the way. It is. I was raised by Asians. You were. The bar backs at the comedy store were all fucking Asians. You know that shit. Well, well, I know oh, Ted and Bobby, Kirk, Bobby Lee. Now you, I know you take uh, saunas with him. Sauna? No, you remember Sa Ted? You remember? <laughs> you remember Kirk, right? Yeah. From yeah, so he raised me, and then Ted raised me. So I love Asians. So, so you say, "Hey, Chinese." Yeah, I call everyone Chinese. I'm obsessed with Chinese. I love Asians. Okay, it's <laughs> inclusive. It's nice. So, so uh, um, it's a love thing. It's a love thing. So. <laughs> what I'm saying is that when I was uh, when I was in 10th grade, I was obsessed with dancing and break dancing. So 
what I did was to make extra money, I would pop lock in front of the comedy store. Are you that out of breath from? Sorry. You just burped. It's okay. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't planning on doing that. I haven't done it in a while. But there I wasn't a, a lot. I, 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 I got it? excited. I got excited when you brought back my past. So, so I was a, a young uh, guy in my early twenties, <laughs> and uh, this young kid would roll out linoleum, and yeah. there'd be a lineup mm -hmm. for the comedy store, and he, he would be like, "I'm telling you, like spinning on his head." Like I had no idea what the history of that was, but you had like a. It looked like somewhat of gang members at your house with linoleum against your mother's best judgment. Wait, is that what you wanted to pursue then? No, I just, whatever I got into as a kid, I really, really got into it. Skateboarding? Skateboarding. I was really into skateboarding. I was on the junior Pepsi team. So I used to get free skateboards, you know, sent to my, sent to my house. Yeah, One free time. Free Pepsi. Yeah, free, free Pepsi. One time I got my, my skateboard stolen actually in front of the comedy store. It's a fucking crazy story. I think I, yeah, I think I was probably, I don't, I f no, I was in, uh, I'd have to say probably fourth or fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade, sixth grade, maybe around sixth grade, something like that. And I'm skateboarding in front of the comedy store with, in my little league outfit hmm. and some kids pull up in a gremlin. They pull up in a gremlin. Which is a car. Yeah, which is a car. A not something, not not like a gizmo, like I played in the movie. No, like a gremlin Not car. like a furry no. monster. No, not like a furry monster. The kids don't know a gremlin now. Okay, you know? well, thank you for explaining to your audience. The a kids. lot of kids also don't know the gremlin's furry monster. Yeah, bro, what the fuck are you doing? You're trying to throw old. me and your yeah. daughter under the bus? That's not cool. <laughs> I'm just trying to cater to the brown gremlin. gremlin. The There's brown the gremlin. gremlin. <laughs> so turn to the right, click that. Yeah. So this pulled up and I'm this is this happened. So they pull up in front of the comedy store and I got my fr my my skateboard that I got from Lonnie Toft who was sponsored by Sims and I used to get free skateboards. And they pulled up. This is a custom board he made for me. And they asked me, they go, "Yo, little dude, where's the 405 freeway?" And I just go, it's over there. You go about 20 miles or 15 miles down there. And they're like, awesome. And I turn around and the one kid um, jumps out of the gremlin and he steals my skateboard, my custom skateboard. Right from under your feet. Right from under my feet and then takes off. But I remembered the license plate and I still remember to this day. It's K-U-R-T-Z-Q. So K -U -Z -Q, K -U -R -T -Z -Q, K -U -R -T -Z -Q. I say this to myself. I remember I go upstairs with my mom and she's in the office doing the lineup, making sure Howie's not on the list. And um, <laughs> get him off the list. He's not ready. He's going to go to carpet. He's trying to sell carpet. You're going to send him home back to Canada, Paul. He wanted to fucking leave, but I saved his ass. <laughs> so, he's, so, so, uh, so I threw up in my Little League hat. I remember the thing. We called the police. Wait, we you threw up in your hat? Yeah, because I was crying because they stole my skateboard. Oh, okay. Yeah, I threw up in my Little League hat. Okay. And um, You couldn't make it to a toilet? No, I was crying. I was heaving. It was my, yeah. my skateboard that I, they made for me. It was yeah. like a special thing. So then, um, so we reported to the police. And then one day, about a couple weeks later, I'm sitting. I'm sitting uh, uh, at school eating my sandwich. And the principal comes up to me taps on my shoulder and says, come to my office. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. I walk in the office and there's my skateboard. Wow. That's amazing. But it's, the story's not ending. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay. There's still, there's a punchline here. So, that, oh. so they found my skateboard. <laughs> so then about a week later, I'm skateboarding in front of my house with my friend, David Thompson. And he says, can I borrow your skateboard? I want to do a kick turn. I'm like, dude, you're going to fuck it up. You know, he goes, no, 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 I won't fuck up. So he does a kick turn. He falls. The skateboard goes in the fucking street and it gets run over and smashed in two. By a gremlin. By a gremlin. So he fucked it up? Yeah. So that was my skateboard story. Sorry. Don't apologize. It's a great story. And, and uh, Lonnie Sims? No, uh, Lonnie, Lonnie Toft. If you Google Lonnie Toft, eight, <laughs> a lot of eight Googling. Wheel. You started this process. No, no okay, no. go go ahead. Lonnie <laughs> Toft, we're going to see Lonnie Toft. I don't know who Lonnie Toft. Is he, he, is he, he one of the... Like, uh, he was the original dog eight, town? eight wheeler. Yeah, yeah. Is he like a dog town guy? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's. How did you meet Lonnie Toft? I think from skateboarding, like... Click on Kent, him. At Kenter, which is uh, uh, on Pally. Uh, Dally, uh, Dally on uh, Fairfax. 
No, Kenter was. Oh, uh, Canters. I always no. get Canters and Kenter mixed up. <laughs> no, Kenter. Kenter was a uh, um, a school in um, mm -hmm. in Pal Palisades. All right. Were you a surfer too? I was. Yeah, I was. I surfed a lot too down in the condo, San Diego. Right. But um, La Jolla. You you know what you know what the best and you know I've known him for so long. We worked together a lot too. Yeah, we did. We worked. We did Saint Elsewhere together. Yeah, which was awesome. Yeah. which I fucking loved. He was great. Was, uh, click great. on Polly Shore Saint Elsewhere. We'll show that scene. We did a scene together. It was great. It was great. Polly Shore Saint Elsewhere. Um, but he, pardon me. Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. What, what a great show that was. I mean, it was. fuck, dude. I didn't. How know. many seasons was that? Ten, six. But it God, seemed like it was 10. so good. Video. You click on videos, and that should be it right there. Right? Isn't it? No. No. Polly Shore stands alone. Polly Shore. Mm. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Also. But it, so here's the thing. I think we should stop clicking to the fucking internet. Well, you were doing things. it. You were. Do, you were. I thought uh, that was your rhythm of your show. No, not really. You created rhythm. Okay. Googling. You like you're my booyah gang. <laughs> my booyah you're, tribe. Teach, you're teaching us a rhythm that we didn't have. But okay. I, I don't mind it. I I found I always found you fascinating. Mm. I was this goofy kid mm. from Toronto that came down here. What? And was, what? Uh, what? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. What? That, what? But, but and and I was fascinated by this amazing place mm. and an amazing woman. Your mother is uh, really responsible not only for me but for many mm. careers, including your life. Um, I, but uh, everything that you've ever been adjacent to, it seems like they were like epic. Like when you talk about you met the the best pop locker but your your dad sammy shore was mm. a comic he was the opening act for elvis presley did you know that yeah. he was yeah. elvis presley's opening did you ever yeah. go to those shows i did i met elvis as a kid i sat on his knee once i would give him <laughs> pills no, really? you didn't. no yeah you like didn't. one pill for the king one pill for the weasel one pill for the no, I'm just <laughs> no i did i did meet elvis when i was as really was elvis was cool to me he was amazing my mom he's so handsome mm -hmm. he's so gorgeous my mom would say really it was a big deal yeah but i mean it was a elvis big, it's a fucking yeah, king it was a big deal um yeah i remember i remember seeing the the re, re, remnants isn't a real word but the, the feeling of just being around because me and lisa marie god rest her soul are born on the same day same birthday same everything february 1st 1968 so we had the same birthday same age same everything i'm 55 so she was 55 and um, so around the time that Elvis had Lisa Marie is kind of was the same time that obviously me, my mom and dad had me. So during that time, we'd be like in the playpen, me and Lisa Marie, we in the backstage with the playpen and stuff like that. Were you, you'd be in a playpen with Lisa Marie yes. while the concert was going on. Yes. Kind of like how she was with, you know, like uh, Tom Green or something. With you. <laughs> it's exactly yes. the same. <laughs> Tom Green and Elvis are uh, <laughs> Tom Green has left the building. Right. Wow. So that's pretty amazing. And then growing up as you know, uh, your parents got divorced, your mother ran the comedy store and th the most epic people in the business were always in and out of your house and babysitting you. You mm -hmm. know, you had uh, Richard Pryor was part of your life, right? Yeah, Richard, Richard Bell, Richard Pryor, Richard Belzer. Um, a lot of dicks. Yeah, a lot of dicks um, were there. Uh, you had, um, I don't know. I mean, they were all there. Uh, Howie, let me see, Howie, obviously, uh, you were there a little later, but uh, you had Robin was there, Gallagher was there, Tim, 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 uh, Thomerson. Tim Thomerson was there. All those guys were there. Biff Maynard, remember Biff Maynard? I loved Biff Maynard. Yeah, he was funny. I did the the uh, make me laugh with Biff. Oh wow! Yeah. Um. So, but what do you have? I'm glad we stopped going to the Google thing. I think it's better. Was we hit him. We hit him heavy with the Google at the top, and now we're just kind of now we're just now reminiscing. Coasting. Now we're freestyling. Yeah, yeah. What also what a lot of people don't know, and you don't fucking know this either, is my mom had some other properties that she owned. Okay, we're in the commercial now, Kenny. What is this music? Why is this music? This can't be the music. The, the, uh, I'm not letting you choose the music anymore. Okay. I'm going to unsubscribe from this music. 
Okay, we get just <laughs> we do the commercial. It's well, the reason why I was saying unsubscribe is because this commercial is for Rocket Money. And the reason why I love Rocket Money so much and I use it is because it allows me to see all the subscriptions that I have that I forgot about. I didn't even know I have. And it allows me to cancel them. Actually, they, <laughs> they cancel them for me. So I don't even have to go through the hassle of going and canceling them. They will just, they have an option where you just press cancel the subscription and they will do it for you, which saves me so much time okay. and helps with managing my money. Yeah, Rocket Money is great. Kenny, not so much. <laughs> Want to cancel his subscription to Kenny. What is no, he, I'm just kidding. He's got rockets. It's Rocket Money. You put rockets, not Kenny. Anyway. Um, Our finances are rocketing up to the moon because of Rocket Money. That's what they are. Doing. It's yeah. like having a personal accountant. Yeah. It really is. It saved me a lot of money. I started using it also. It is great. Everybody should have it. Rocket Everybody. Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, like I just said. It monitors your spending, which is great, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. You don't have to go to a bunch of different people or hire someone to do that for you because Rocket Money does it. So just it's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscription. I just said that. Were you not listening? Monitors to me? your spending. <laughs> I just said and, that. Well, I'm confused because of what's going on, and this music <laughs> is very confusing. Kenny! Okay, anyways, stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash howie. That's rocketmoney.com slash howie. Rocket Money. Dot com slash Howie. Yeah. I want to, how we stop this music, <laughs> how we stop him from making this background is we go back to the podcast. All right. Now we're just now reminiscing. Coasting. Now we're freestyling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What also what a lot of people don't know, and you don't fucking know this either, is my mom had some other properties that she owned. Like she owned a place called the Pickle Barrel. A lot Where? of people don't. It was literally across the street. You know, back in the day, there was the tarot card reading place right across the street from the store. Yeah. Well, before that, years on Sunset before, Boulevard. Yeah. Before that, it was a place called the Pickle Barrel. So my mom, I'm gonna buy a place. Can just, just we're just gonna have pickles. And it's <laughs> really, yeah. Really? There's pickles from all over the world. She'd have pickles from Hungary, <laughs> pickles from Poland. So as a kid, my mom always made me shut up, and she'd <laughs> she'd stick a pickle in my fucking hand, bro, with like a napkin. She'd get, just shut him up, put a pickle in his hand. So as a kid, I remember I always had a fucking pickle in my hand. Why, why does that make you be quiet? Because it's, I'm eating a pickle in my hand. I mean, you know, in my With, mouth. When the, how long? And then what happened to the pickle barrel? It went. It wasn't happening. My 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 daughter fucked it up. <laughs> what? Sandy, Sandy fucked it up. How did Sandy? Oh. I, she, I think she managed it or something like that. Sandy had the yeah. the pickle place was going even when the comedy store was going. I yes. don't remember the, seeing. The I know that's what I'm saying. A lot of people don't remember. It, it was, was an shit. undercover secret like <laughs> speakeasy pickle place. No, it was a real it was pickle. pickle. Like pickle. customers would come in and buy pickles. It just didn't do so hot. Did that? Did that building become part of the comedy store later no, on? No, it was when? across the street. It was at I the tarot card reading place. Did you pickle. Did you own the tarot card reading place? No, just no, the pickles. She just had the pickles. Yeah, and then she had Thai us. What's that? Which was uh, Thai food. This was before, before the House of Blues, right across the street from you know the store. Yeah, there was a, a, a it was called I forgot the name of the the cool like Hollywood restaurant, but my mom bought it from that. That was like where Ryan O'Neill used to go and all that. My mom bought it and she started a, a Thai restaurant and it was called Thai Us, and she just have Thai food. Yeah, Thai Us, and then next door to pickles. Yeah, no, the tie was right after that. Oh, the pickles closed. Yeah. She she trans uh she transcended from pickles to tie. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's your love of Asians. Yes. <laughs> Is it? Probably. But then also a lot of people don't know she had a theater in um in uh in Hollywood on the corner of Las Palmas and Sunset and she called it the Richard Pryor Theater. Do you remember that? I do. I didn't know that was hers. Yes. So she started that, and she had a motel next to that. So she started buying all this shit, you know. You know and then she, I'm gonna get this this hotel for Richard. He's gonna work on all his stuff. And yet Richard never went once to it. To the theater? Never once. That's how much my mom loved Richard. So, w tell us a Richard story that nobody knows in in the house, like uh, or that. Well, you know, one morning, you know, I was making my Cheerios downstairs and he says, and he started walking by, man, sorry, man, I'll, I'll see you later, weasel. And he just took off. No, I'm just kidding. 
No. Um, <laughs> I think they had sex, but that's another story. Did your mother I have, a, so. have a have a, a I think so, an affair yeah. with Richard? Yeah. I Why do you think? I don't so? know. I don't know if it was an affair. I think they probably just humped. You know, I she was see. humping everyone. She was like the Humpty Dance, bro. The Humpty so, Dance. Did you have sex with his mom? No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> he I brought you on to say you are my son. <laughs> no, but I don't know that she was having sex with everyone. But she was a she was a she like she yeah, dated like, comics. Yeah, I remember one morning, actually a couple mornings, waking up and James Lee Reeves was at the fucking house. Who? James Lee Reeves. I don't know who that he is. He was like the country comedian. He had the curly hair. He had all this shit in the box, almost like Gary Mildeer, kind of like that. No, I remember Ollie Joe Prater. Yeah, I don't remember. She didn't do Ollie Joe Prater. I don't think so. No. no. So did that bother you or did that, that, that? Yeah, it bothered me. Yeah, for sure. You know, it bothered me because they were using her, obviously. You know what I mean? But, you know, she was using them too. So it was like a big use fest, I guess, you know? Wow. Yeah. You did have a really interesting, colorful life. Did you know you wanted to be a comedian? Um, I, you, I think you seem so. to be doing different things. Like at first I did think you wanted to be a pop dancer. Like yeah. A, I, I think so. I, I, I mean, was I it? was so fascinated with you guys, you know, when I would see you guys at the Westwood store or the, the comedy store, I would see, I would follow you guys around. Right. So I would watch Lenny Schultz. I would watch you. I was obsessed with you. I thought you were awesome. You did the glove on your head and it fell off. And, but Kinnison you know, was the one that kind of got yeah, you going. Yeah. Right? Because he, he came at, he came at, a, he came it came at it at another angle. It was just like, where the fuck is this guy coming from? And, um, you know, he was, you know, obviously an ex-preacher. And so he had that, you know, that, that, you know, that anger and he had been fucked over by, you know, his wives and, you know, oh, oh, oh. So he like came at it. was like, where the fuck is this guy going? And it was bizarre. And I remember I was 14 years old was the first time I ever saw him. At and, Westwood? At Westwood, yeah. yeah. And that was like, I remember he was a doorman. He was like a doorman there. Yeah, he was a doorman, but she would always put him on last. Right. And she, he would go on. There'd be like six, seven people in the audience, and he would take the stool, and he would throw it at him. You know what I mean? At right. the audience. And you, you became know. friends with him? And I did. I was obsessed with him. Right. You know, was, and he uh, took you on the road. That was a, yeah. a little bit... Listen, I think he was absolutely brilliant, but that was a scary group to be in, the drug use and the... Yeah. Uh, right? Did you yeah, get involved in that? A little bit. I'll do an Argus joke. I don't like cocaine. I just like the way it smells. <laughs> <laughs> Argus is still there. He's great. Yeah. He just never... Argus Hamilton, for those that don't know, is this comic who has been probably the longest mainstay at the comedy store. He was there the day I got there. He's probably going to be on stage tonight at some point. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, he's he, great. He, and he never wanted... To, a lot of comics wanted to get seen, do the Tonight Show... And then get a sitcom. Yeah, cruise around. Yeah, he didn't want to. He just did, wanted the Tonight Show, which he got. And then uh -huh. I think he well, he was it. a big cokehead. I mean, we could be yeah. here for hours about Argus, but I don't want to. I don't want to do that. But yeah, he was a real. But he's been sober for. I've been sober, Paula, for thirty years. I feel good, and he's great. He fucking runs down Sunset. I love him, and I think he's great, and he's a great comic. So so, but then you went on the road with Sam. Sam kind of brought you or legitimized you as a stand-up comic, mm -hmm. don't you think? He did, but but also, do you remember the show that I did with you in Arizona at the fair? I do remember that. They got mad at you. <laughs> remember? Yeah. <laughs> so we did the... Uh, it was we, so cool. We did the Phoenix uh, State Fair and Polly and me. Mm -hmm. And Polly went on. And uh, I remember specifically, you talked about how the young girls have a, a peach fuzz. Mm. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. Was, it was the the state fair is a family, it's kind of a family friendly. People take their whole families, to and you were kind of well known already. You mm -hmm. were the weasel. You were on MTV, and he went on, and the mm -hmm. family showed up with all their kids, and he regaled them with uh, the the youngins with their peach fuzz mm. on their. I was like twenty one, twenty two years old. I was you know, but I was raised at the comedy store, so. You know, I have a potty mouth because I was raised around it. So that's kind of who I became. So, um, uh, but I remember the plane ride over there was awesome. You know what I mean? We were on the plane right. and it was like a great time. And then the plane ride home was really quiet. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you guys so quiet? You know, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, it was, a, it was a, it, I'll never forget that. Cause that was like a really 
big deal for me. Wasn't my son with us and I had fed him because I think we were on a small private plane. Out of Van Nuys. Yeah, and he had the shits on the way home. You don't remember Maybe. that? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Alex, <laughs> do you remember that? Is that you? You remember? Yeah, I remember that. Was it with <laughs> Polly? Was it, it was with Polly. So I, because when That's uh, he's not with his mother, I, I let him eat everything at the fair. Yeah. Um, they got mad at you for talking about peach fuzz. My wife got mad at me for letting him eat whatever he did. But it's like he, you don't remember my son taking a shit three inches from your knees? I, I don't. And the, the oxygen masks <laughs> barely he dropped. Walked out. <laughs> yeah. But, but it was like, it was a really cool, it was a really cool story. So him and obviously uh, Michael Rotenberg, uh, Howie's manager, was my manager. Was ma my manager and he got us, got me on that gig. And uh, uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I had a, a blue BMW 850, uh, and I pulled my BMW right up to the plane. I'm 21, 22 years old, something like that. And I pull up to the plane. I hop on with Howie. We go do the show. The plane picks us up. Excuse me. The plane picks us up, drives us to the fair. We go in a tunnel. We do two shows. We hop back in, we hop back on the plane. I get in my BMW and I wind up at Falafel King in Westwood like that night at like nine or 10 o'clock at night. And I had a check in my pocket for $15,000. And I was like, this is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? And it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool beginning. Of you gotta, you gotta hang with me. It's yeah. like you, you show up today, <laughs> you do me. my podcast and then you'll be back in wherever. I don't Falafel know. Falafel King. Yeah, with, with a bottle of water and nothing. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> is bottle free. Of water. This is free. And Where then do you I also I also then, open for you in Hawaii too. Aren't there a lot of yeah. gigs yeah. like that though? I know even from you, like not all comedy gigs you get to just do your normal routine. Like if mm. it's it, when you go and do certain events, they say it has to be PG, corporate, right? Yeah. Corporate events, yeah, and stuff like that. So you kind of had to tailor it to that event. But I don't think people wanted to see him tailor it i think they want to see he's the weasel he was the superstar he's what the young people came to see and like he says it wasn't like he was trying to be dirty or mm -hmm. have a potty mouth that's who he was right. that's what yeah. people he was like the bad boy of comedy not the bad boy like sam kinnison was a bad boy but you were sexual really, very sexual yeah very like goofy and but it wasn't it was never my stuff was never like mean-spirited it wasn't like i don't want to say dice was mean-spirited but his was he was in character being kind of harsh Mine was always just fun, you know what I mean? And goofy the and so, hey, yeah, bro. Whoa, I didn't mean to. Ah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that's who you were. I remember even when I was really little, and he would come on the beach. Mm. I remember seeing you on the beach, oh, and you would wow. come up with like five women in a mesh mm. short tank top. And I thought you were the coolest thing I've ever seen right. in my whole entire He'd be life. wearing the <laughs> mesh short right. tank Yeah, top. that's not, what I'm talking the about. Yeah, There's yeah. hot women, and you in the middle with like, I think I have a picture with you with like oh, a wow. pink mesh short belly tank top wow yeah and it was yeah really I, would, cool. I would you know that was a, probably my mom's clothes yeah so i put on my mom's clothes yeah. did you did yeah. you to meet women no i just love my mom so much and i thought her <laughs> wardrobe was cool i would just fucking go in the closet and be like fuck i'm gonna try this shit on my mom would be like that looks good yeah you know I mean? <laughs> she loved it the comedy store are you you guys uh inherited the comedy store but that didn't you're not part of it, are you? I mean, yes and no. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, am I ordering what? alcohol and I'm not involved with that? No, 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 no. The comedy store is, is me. I mean, everywhere I go, people know I'm associated with the comedy store. And I you're just, proudly associated with it. It, yes. was, it launched comedy. Yes. You know, I don't think anybody yeah. alive today of this generation doesn't know or even without knowing doesn't love somebody in comedy that didn't have some attachment in some way to the comedy store. Yeah. Whether they were launched there, whether they were seen there, whether they played there, whether they work out there, and that's where they put together their Netflix special. Everybody, everybody. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan, you know, yeah. is, is a product no, of just, the comedy yeah, store. I was just on his uh, his podcast last this last week, and I played his club. I know you played it as well. And, uh, the Mothership. Yeah, The Mothership and Austin. And, and, and like you said, you know, what he's doing out there is, is remarkable. You know, he's in, in a lot of it, you know, has to do with my mom. Yeah. You know, and has to do with, uh, you know, how she ran it. And that's why I love being there. I love physically being at his club because I feel my mom, my mom's focus there. And people ask me about the club. They're like, what's up with the club? I'm like, there's just a focus there that, you know, what it was like it was when my mom was running the club. 
I said that to him too. You know, I did his podcast a couple of weeks ago and I and I dropped in on his club. We did the Moon Tower Just for Last Festival. You mm. know, I do the Just for Last Festival, mm -hmm. which is I'm one of the owners of. And but I dropped in on his club. And I said, not since mm. the uh, mid seventies, late seventies and early eighties have I felt that kind of excitement around a comedy club. Yeah. A, a very that th th there's four shows a night which are lined up mm. around the corner. Mm. And they're so excited and mm. so electric to mm. see, you know, anybody just to the joy of the art form of comedy and not since the comedy store has there been a place mm. where it's just a must see kind of place mm -hmm. for comedy. Yeah, it's definitely, a, I don't want to say a tourist trap, but it's a very, it's a tourist, it's kind of like going to see, you know, I don't know, the Chinese Wax Museum, but in Austin, you know, it's a place that Joe has built and uh, they're, they're, you know, it's just everyone wants to go. Like you said, it's lined up. And um, I really like being there with him. And I like being there with Tony. And I like that they named, you know, the bar downstairs after my mom. Right. And when I'm in the bar, I feel like my mom. And I'm there with Joe. And we're like, all we do is talk about those days. And we all get emotional. And, um, we, you know, we all miss my mom because she wasn't just my mom. She was all your guys' moms. She really you was. Know? I mean, and if you're not in comedy, it's very hard to describe. But Mitzi Shore was the the proprietor and the kind of the, the gatekeeper for everything that you saw on TV, everything that you saw in clubs. You know, that's this was the epicenter. Other people tried to... You know, I know there's the improv, but I feel like the improv came after and the improv didn't. But also the thing about my mom, the difference between my mom and a lot of these club owners is my mom, she never wanted, you know, a piece of the pie, meaning she never said, you know, Howie, you're my comic. You're developing here. I'm going to develop you. And guess what? I want something from your, from your career the rest of my life. She right. could have easily done that. And been a manager or something. Yeah, like that. she could she have didn't, been she didn't do that. And I thought that was really cool. She was always about developing the comic and then sending them on their way. And and she came from a place of this as opposed to this. And um, He's pointing and I, at his heart rather than cash for yeah. those that are listening. Yeah. So uh, so I thought that was really cool. She was all and I think that's what fucked her up, to be quite honest, as far as her her, her ailments when she got sick. Why? I think that because she's an artist, she's, she was one of us, right? You know, she's like Bernie Brillstein, you know, how Bernie right. Brillstein was able to kind of manage her builder was able to kind of manage, but also be an artist right. and develop and develop. So what did that have to do with her health? Well, because I don't, I think that, that my mom was an artist, but she wasn't a, a real business person. Do you know what I mean? Like when it yeah. comes to taxes and insurance, and you got to pay the building and, and you know, the money that it costs. The mental, her. the mental yes. state that it put her in. Yes. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, if the, if there's no bodies, if there's no bodies in the club, then guess what? The rent's not being paid. If you're not paying the rent, you got to, you got to figure it out. And then you start to stress. And I think that if she would have had more of a business person doing the business and then her just developing the comedians, I don't think she would have maybe got sick so soon. Yeah. I also heard from you, obviously I wasn't there, but I heard from you one of the great things about her was that she would take comics that were just starting out and develop them rather than being some of those other clubs that only wanted the big names that were mm -hmm. already getting paid. She was the one that opened their, her doors for everyone, the yeah. new comics, right? To come yeah. in it was and have based it on It was based on, you know, you, you would show up on an amateur night and hopefully get to be a regular, but it was just, she strictly based on your talent and her taste in your talent. Mm -hmm. Not that you could draw, you know, and, and there was always enough room for an unknown to do time versus, and the biggest of the biggest were there on the same night, yeah. but. And this was authentically who she was. So it started with my father. Mm -hmm. So it started with my father because my dad was performing. This is where they met in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin in the 1950s. So my dad was a comic for three months at the, at the, um, at the camp there. And my mom would start watching my dad and they started, you know, they started doing this. Can he's, you say he's got his finger into the holes of the other, like the okay sign. He's showing. Um, they were humping. Finger intercourse. Yeah. Kind my of. mom and dad started humping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were and having finger sex. Finger sex. And, um, and this is, you know, this is Scott was born and stuff like that. But 
what would happen is my mom, it was just a natural thing for her to, to develop comedians. So for my father, he would say, you know, she would say to him like, oh, do this, try it like that. So she was developing my dad's act. Oh, really? I didn't yes. know that. She was developing my dad's act. It came natural to her. So then when she had, you know, the kid and they got married, then it became even more apparent that he was really, or excuse me, she was really developing his act. You know, and that's right. why it was so hard for him, you know, and she, he was so nervous around her and why he started drinking. And even when my dad did the Ed Sullivan show, um, it was a big deal. You know, and my dad, the biggest, deal. the biggest deal back in the day. And my mom, you know, helped him, you know, develop it. You know, he did his, you know, his bullfighter thing and his brother Sam shit. And that's when she said, oh, he blew it. He, he fucked up. It? Yeah, that's what she said. If you, again, if you go back to Let's Google. Let's Google. Sammy Shore <laughs> on Ed Sullivan. Yeah, Sammy, Sammy Shore on, on Ed, Ed Sullivan. Sullivan. So, um, so, yeah, my mom was a really harsh critic. My dad never really liked performing in front of her, from what I understand is what he said. And. And she was harsh, but that's who she was. You know, she naturally became... And she didn't hold back. I mean, it no. wasn't, you know, that's not funny. No, 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 that's no. She not, was, but yeah. that's actually good, even though in the moment it could be kind of hurtful or yes. you could be, be defensive. Is that yeah. which one? No, is? that was, that. I don't no, know. The, Just put a photo. No, put, but, but don't you want to see the, the, the what is the, I don't know saying, if the actual bit is on there. Is I don't the, think you, you got to click on videos, guys. It is on video, but it's yeah. not. I mean, I don't think the actual. I don't think the actual bit of him on stage is there. I don't think it's on the internet. Okay. Yeah, but anyways. But so. you have to understand that the the Ed Sullivan show was, was millions. But that's that's what launched Elvis. That's mm. what launched the Beatles. Mm -hmm. You know, one shot. He was on the show with Barbara Streisand and the Rolling Stones. Really? Yeah. That's how. I mean, my dad was fucking on the way. For sure. We're in a commercial. Can I just say something? Mm -hmm. We're in a commercial. This is probably the one commercial you want to be closer for. Kenny. Kenny, you've got the wrong lens on. Kenny, tell the people what this is for. Well, I'm actually a little bit bummed because it's kind of ruining my Father's Day gift. But it's felt for Caldera Lab. Right. And it's to make, I mean, it's great for Father's Day and I was going to get it for you. I think I'm still going to get it for you, even though so I'll the, get you something else too, but skin, it's for skincare. Skincare. Yeah. I'm talking about my skincare, which is I'm, I'm so, uh, I don't know if you can tell from this distance, Kenny. <laughs> Join Caldera Lab for the skincare upgrade trusted by countless men. And you can use Howie at caldera.com to enjoy an exclusive 20% off their finest products. But let me tell you about it. There's a whole regimen and it comes with three different things. It All comes right. with the clean slate and it's where you start your day and it's a balancing cleanser that you use gentle plant-based cleansing. I, I, my, my skin has been gently plant-based cleansed. Okay. If you were any closer, Kenny, they would be able to see. Go ahead. He's going closer on that. He's going closer on this. <laughs> well, uh, okay. And then that? the second thing is the base layer is a nutrient dense fortifying moisturizer that hydrates your skin, which you need. I'm dad. very moist right now. Mm -hmm. You can't tell on a podcast how moist the podcasters are, but I am so moist, and especially for my age. Third mm -hmm. is the good is your go-to at night before bed and clinically proven multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother. So good. You're not talking about the icon. No, I am. So oh, okay. goodbye to your wrinkles. That's going to help tighten your skin so yes. you don't have saggy skin. So you don't that have the Kenny bags. can buy the new lens that to use in the commercials where it looks like we're in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. So want to take your skin to the next level with Caldera Lab? Look no further than the Icon. The rejuvenating eye serum is here to address the three most common skin concerns around the eye. Your fine lines, like I said, the dark circles and the puffiness. That's what you need. That's why all you wear of glasses. those. Yeah. I don't, well, even without the glass, well, from far away. Look at look at me, people. Can you even see me? <laughs> <laughs> I know people listen to this, but the people who are watching on YouTube, Kenny put the wrong lens today in our ad cam. <laughs> well, anyways, this is a great product for any male figure in your life for Father's Day, since Father's Day is right around the corner. And can I just say, I have an amazing male figure. Who? Oh. oh, just you. <laughs> Get 20% off with our code Howie at calderalab.com. That's 20% off at calderalab.com by using code Howie. Make Father's Time a thing of the past. Father's Day. 
No, maybe Father's Father time. time. Father time. A thing of the past this summer? With the best skincare tools from Caldera Lab. Make father time. A father thing time. The... Father time. Father, are you reading know without knowing what you're reading? I don't know what father time is. Father time. Father time is it ticks by. Father oh, time. Okay, okay, okay. Let not, me say it again. Not, no, you don't have to say it again. My daughter, the lens is far away, and my daughter doesn't understand English. I don't know what father time. Just I give them the like call father, to action. Okay, the, make father time. Daddy time. A thing of the past this summer with the best skincare tools from Caldera Lab. <laughs> Can we go back to the podcast? Yeah. And put a new lens on this. Kenny! And off of that show, did you, you're saying, did he blow it or did he have a rough set? I thought he did okay. So if you watch it, you're like, he didn't bomb, but my mom said he bombed. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was he devastated? Yes. That's really Was tough. he devastated coming off or just after he Did he heard, think he like, did good and then, yeah. That, I think that, I think that, she, I think that his self-esteem was so fucked up from her, you know, because he wanted to be, you know, his wife. He wanted that. I think he really just, it was hard for him. I mean, you know, it was hard for him. It was hard for him to, to be married to my mom for several reasons. And hard for her to be married to him. They were both miserable. When I met you, they, were not, they were not married, obviously. How old were you when they separated? They were, I was four. Yeah. Do you remember living with your father I and mother? I do, I do. I remember him swimming naked in the pool <laughs> and, and his little butt cheeks going up and down. He bought the house, you know, from my mom. That was the house we... Um, I was raised in. It was on Doheny and Sunset. It was up there. And uh, it was Dorothy Lamore's house before that, the actress Dorothy Lamore. Yeah. So she would always get mail sent to the house and it would stack up. And I'd be like, Mom, Dorothy's mail. I'm like, What do we do? She goes, She's going to pick it up. Don't worry. <laughs> and meanwhile, she'd been dead for several years. But you know, she'll <laughs> <laughs> just leave it. Leave it alone. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know who Dorothy Lamore was? You were, I, yeah, I, she was an actress from the 40s and 50s. Yeah. But she was dead when you had that. She, yeah, she was. Do dead. you still have her mail? Um, no. I would love to read Dorothy Lamore's mail. Yeah, it's probably dick pics from Ben Crosby or some shit, you know? You never know. So you were four years old. You were raised by your mom. Did you... I know, like, uh, later on, you went on the road with your dad. Would, was there contention? There must have been a lot of yes. contention between your mom and your dad. In fact, she opened the comedy store. He opened the comedy store originally, right? For a place for him and his friends to correct to do stand up yeah when uh, after the divorce or separation she got the club and none of his friends would play there so out of necessity all these young bucks who weren't really known mm -hmm. would do time there is that true is that how it yeah came i mean to be? It, it seems that way it seems that once she took it that's when the boom happened so that was 1972 73 74 so that's early right so that's where you know you know, all you guys started coming out. You know, was it Jimmy, J, uh, J, Jimmy, JJ J, J, J Walker. Was uh, he like the first one to one pop of the out of there? Guys, you had Freddie Prince there. You know, Binder was there. I mean, you remember you yeah. were there at that. You, you, what what year did you come in? Seventy seven. Yeah, so you were there around that time. Yeah. So so yeah. So I mean, Saget was there. Saget was there when you were there. Yeah. We um, met. We, we. But it was amazing to see. You know, uh, now I know, or I've known for years. But I'd see, you know, Letterman host. But Letterman was not a known entity. Correct. He was just uh, some weatherman that yeah. drove out in his pickup truck to try to do stand-up yeah. comedy. And, right? and Jay was there for Jay, a while. Jay was there. He was uh, he was the only one that I was aware of that was kind of okay with playing every club. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, there were comedy store people, and then there were improv people and other people. Yeah. But he, he played yeah, it was it was interesting because when I first started playing the improv improvs on the road, um, it was probably the uh, late '90s, early 2000s. Um, I would travel with a curtain, and it was in my contract to have a curtain cover the whole improv sign because I didn't want someone to take a picture of Polly Shore, Mitzi Shore's son, in front of the improv sign and get it to my mom because that would have killed her. Really? Yes. Even at that time in the 90s? Yeah. So yeah. you did it. But you did it anyways behind her back? Well, she I had did. to make a living. I had to make yeah. a living. I had to, you know, I was, I was working. Was so she piano. never knew that you played uh -huh. the improv. Oh. Yeah. 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 There was a real rivalry between the, because I feel that they were uh, trying to steal everybody's son. Listen, the improv and Catch a Rising Star in New York were 
the epitome of stand up there. But what had happened is I think it was because the Tonight Show moved out here in seventy two. Mm. The the Tonight Show I was showing you. I have the seats from Johnny Carson from, and then the Tonight Show, like we were just talking about for the uh, about the um, Ed Sullivan Show, mm. became the launching pad. It was huge. Right. And when he would say, I remember I was still in 72, uh, down, you know, in, in Toronto, and I'd watch The Tonight Show, and he'd say, this young man, it's his first time on TV, and we saw him the other night at the, at the comedy store. And mm. I didn't know, that's how people started hearing about mm -hmm. the comedy store. The improv wasn't even here yet. Mm. Yeah, right? no, it was Jim McCauley. Yeah. Jim McCauley was the talent booker. He hated me. He hated yeah. me. Well, yeah. yeah, he would not put me on that show. Yeah. I, I auditioned so many times. I ended up getting the show because Joan Rivers mm. would come in and do her set. Remember when she was guest hosting? Yeah. She would come in and do her sets at the comedy store. And Mitzi mm. was so wonderful to me. I knew there was no way to get on The Tonight Show. And The Tonight Show, for me at that time, was the, the only stepping ground to get one step further in comedy. And she was coming on, and Mitzi, your mom, put me on right before her one night mm -hmm. so she would see me. Mm -hmm. And she saw me and put me on the next day, put mm -hmm. me on The Tonight Show with her as the host. Mm -hmm. Johnny saw me with Joan, oh, wow. and I ended up doing 22 yeah. uh, appearances with Johnny. Why did that guy hate you and not want you on? I think he was trying to serve Johnny, and they liked really dry monologist monologist yeah, yeah. Uh, bobby uh kelton was like a mm. big you remember oh, yeah, bobby of course yeah so these people that you kind of how he was a little goofy you know what i mean his they style didn't like was, characters yeah it was a little wacky so so jim mccauley was you know a little little snobby or whatever he liked you know what i mean people who just did monology not characters not you know he didn't like, he didn't think that John, his excuse was, you'll never get on. This is not Johnny's cup of tea. Mm. So he was trying to serve what he believed Johnny would like. You know, that being said, Johnny saw me himself and asked me to come on. And then yeah. I ended up coming on. He but, also fucked Maureen Murphy. Remember that girl? I do know Remember? that girl because I was on a young comedian special. Uh, Barbara, uh, Carlin saw me at the comedy store. Okay. You know, that was that was George's um, wife. Okay. And hired me for a young comedian special. The young comedian special that I did was the sixth annual. It was me, Richard Lewis, um, Jerry Seinfeld, um, uh, Harry Anderson, and Maureen Murphy. Mm. And yeah, that's how I think she got on The Tonight Show. Because he, he was stooping her. But I don't think anybody knows who she is. It's okay. It's inside. Hmm. It's cool. It's cool that not everyone knows who she, she is. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, Inside and they, they can Inside. Google it at home and pick up the rhythm that we've dropped here. Right. <laughs> now, yeah, but yeah, so, so Jim McCauley was, he was in charge and, 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 you know, if you got on the, if you got on the Tonight Show, that was it. It was, that was the rhythm of, that was the rhythm of how to, how to get a sitcom or a movie from Hollywood back then. You would develop, you'd do your six, seven minutes on the Tonight Show and away you'd go. But you've had, you found a different path, MTV. I did. MTV yeah. and you blew up and people were, I remember cause I, Michael Romberg, we have the same manager and you did amazing movies. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, I mean, amazingly successful career for a long time. My you know? favorite movies. Which you are my favorite movies. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you. And What's Sino Man, Biodome. Yeah. Biodome is my favorite. Yeah. Isn't that uh, uh, Bieber's <laughs> uh, father-in-law? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so Stephen Baldwin, the co-star of Biodome, his daughter, is Haley Haley yeah. Baldwin? Yeah, I was married to Justin Young. She's a hottie. She is. Yeah, yeah. you knew him before she was born. I remember her on the set. Oh, she was. Was born. she on she, the I set? I have photos of her on the set with him. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Did are uh, you close with him? With we Stephen talk Baldwin? sometimes. We Isn't talk he very sometimes. religious? He's super. He's, yeah, he's uh, he's into that. But you know what? Stephen's one of those guys, and and I don't want to call him an an addict or anything, but. He's sober. I, I believe he's sober, but he's one of those guys. And a lot of people that are, are kind of addicts need to find something. So I'm happy he found something that's actually positive, you know, so because before he wasn't, he was a little nuts. And so I'm very happy whether he's very, you know, way too far Jesus-y. If, if it makes him happy and it keeps him, keeps him cool, then I'm all for it, you know. Did the, he's, he's a good guy. I like. Did the, uh, were you upset at Jimmy Kimmel for his joke? Um, 
Uh, no, because I think for me, it's been so, so, for so many years, people shit on me, you know, as far as making fun of me. Oh, Polly Shore, I'm like a punchline. And um, when I, when I, I wasn't surprised because he's, he's done it before. Um, so when people, people were texting me because I didn't, I was rushing to go watch the Oscars. I was in the cars in Vegas and people were texting me like, oh my God, Jimmy Kimmel, da, 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 da. And then when I saw it, I thought it was hilarious. So that, that, I, thought that's it was, a, 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 I thought it was really cool. And I thought that, you know, like, like I said, I've been shit on for so long, you know, that I'm, I'm okay with anyone talking about me. I'm not really offended by it. I was, I thought it was sweet to be quite honest. So, so, so did I. Yeah. Other people said, do you think that was mean? And I don't. And I, I spent a good portion of my career being shit on. Mm. I can't tell you how many times in the mm. 80s mm. Um, on uh, David Letterman's top 10, it was like, and uh, we'll mm. send them to a Howie Mandel concert. Right. You know? Mm. And I think that us people who kind of relied on uh, more of a character, mm more like people would you know like like when you think of me people were going what 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 and then mm -hmm. or they think of you they go to weasel or they, mm -hmm. they do that I, I think that it was given a little less respect and i talk to scott all the time in in vegas to carrot top mm. you know who i think is brilliantly wonderful for having the ability whether you like it or not to create and write and build an act that draws a house so much so that he's has a room for the last 15 years, I don't know how long, mm. that completely sells out. He's a piece of business much more than the average comic who just sits at home and writes uh, a monologue. Well, who's laughing now, right? But the truth is, yeah. he, he's also one of these guys. You know, in our community of stand-up, we're probably the hardest on each other more than you would think we would. So, so the, the fact is, I've also, as somebody who does that, kind of relished the fact that we're even a reference on the biggest show in the world mm. that your name can be referenced. And for those that didn't listen, and I'm not, I'm not doing the joke, but the two guys who won Academy Awards that night were part of his history and in Polly Shore movies, you know? So the fact is that's pretty great. It was cool. No, it was cool. It's just, you know, it just shows you also about the business. I mean, look what you're doing here. You know what I mean? Like you even said you were shit on for a lot of your career. People make fun of you. And look at what you created here. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, and I was driving over here and I was thinking like, oh, this is cool. Like I'm doing Howie's podcast. I've known him since I was a kid. Um, and at the end of the day, this business is about doing. It doesn't matter about the level that you do it. It could be a small little internet video. It could be a, a romantic comedy. It could be a Michael Bay, like big blockbuster. As long as you're doing, and this gets him out of bed. He has something that he really enjoys. And that's what this, really, this business is about. You know, for me, like I've been doing it 35 years. Next week, I'm going to Arkansas. I can't wait. You know what I mean? It's like at the end of the day, he drives here every day. You guys don't see it, but he's got a huge studio. It's like thousands of square feet of stuff, and he gets off. Well, it's on just it. because I got a lot of garbage that my wife won't let me bring home. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, but I think that's the right but, way to look at I'm it because a lot of people look at it for, for the money, accolades, yeah. fame, and all that shit. And it's not that's not what motivates me. I, I know it's not what motivates him because he doesn't have to be doing any of this shit. But Man. you also can't be, and this goes for life. You can't be so concerned about what other people say mm -hmm. as much as if you are happy and passionate about what you're getting out of bed for and mm -hmm. what you did, that's all that matters. Because as many accolades as you get from other people, that is the most fleeting. You know, you walk down Hollywood Boulevard mm -hmm. and I, I defy you to be able to identify 10% of the names because mm -hmm. they were huge in the 30s mm -hmm. and the 40s and mm -hmm. they were the biggest things and we don't know who they are and mm -hmm. we don't know what their work was. So. You got to live in the now mm. and you got to do it now and not for that. So, but I was just asking you about the, the you know, the Academy Awards is the biggest show on TV mm. and there was a reference made to you in kind of a, a great sense of humor. I put, I would have been proud, but I, I was wondering yeah, how. I mean, again, I, I was like you just said, I was, I'm 55. I've been around for a long time. I'm not really affected as as I was when I was younger, when people would shit on me. So, but that I was, wasn't a shit. Oh, uh, wasn't? You think it was a shit? You mm. think that was a shit on you? Well, he said he said something like, um, 
Like these guys are doing great. You know, who's not doing great or something like his Paul or is probably not. Well, doing. That's an interpretation. But, you know, I guess so. Because two people won two out of three won an Academy Award. But still, yeah, they are, you know, you take it from like they know who I am. It's enough of a a reference on an international mm. billion period. I can mention that yeah, name. Yeah. And the, the joke, I always say, humor comes out of negative. Mm. So if two guys walk into a bar, something not great <laughs> happens to one. So the fact that two people are winning an Academy Award, it is not beyond anybody's perception that in the next couple of years, it could be you walking up and getting a trophy. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. fact that one out of three didn't mm. that night, mm is kind of and that and that third one is a name that is a reference that everybody knows who the, who he is is yeah. kind of a positive yeah okay yeah yeah no yeah yeah no i i get it i get it but it's kind of like when the press came after me um that week or the you know weeks after that and they interviewed me about it i was flattered i mean i was and yeah you should be. yeah i was flattered and i, I was cool that um that I was, I was referenced. I and also saw coverage of you lately for your body positivity post mm, for Bridget yeah. Fonda. Which yeah. I thought was really cool that you yeah. did that. Because yeah. there's so much hate right now on social media. What is it? I'm not aware of that. Here, if you put it up. What, 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 what made you try, what made you decide to post well, that? Well, we're all, you know, us as, as people, we're all humans and yeah. we all get older yeah. and we all look different than we did back in the day. People are coming after Bridget Fonda for um, how she looks now compared to how she looked, you know, 30 years ago. So I yeah. did I did kind of a um, a reference to that. Oh, wow. Did you see that? Yeah. So you look up Polly Shore. It's on his Instagram. It's on his Instagram. And, and he does a side by side of a then and now of him and Bridget yeah, Fonda. Yeah. And I basically said, hey, babe, you know, it's all good. We all get older. And, you know, you guys, hey, be nice to us. We're just people. It was kind of, you know. It is amazing of people in show business. I've always said this, where people feel like they have the uh, the right. Like you would never say, I don't like your hair or you gained weight or you're heavy. Where is it on this? Go down. Go, Go keep down going, more. keep going. There it is. There. To the right. Yeah, they're right there. So that's what it is. What a wonderful thing to do. I didn't know that you did that. Yeah, so. You did know, she reach out? Um, no, she said, please stop talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She said, please don't, don't bring me up. Uh, no, she? she didn't. I'm sure she saw it. You know, I don't know. She didn't say anything. But, uh, you know. That's pretty cool, though. But uh, as someone who is 38, almost 40, the expectation in social media right now for you to keep a certain image into your 40s or 50s, especially for women, is so hard to see. So I thought that was kind of cool and amazing. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, thank do you, you. Do, and and uh, do you go with Bobby Lee to the Korean sauna? <laughs> That's what I heard. I go. I go all the time, but I don't like say, "Hey, dude, meet me at the Korean sauna." So I go all the time, um, but uh, that's a weird place. He says he sees you there, Bobby. Yeah. 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 No, I see him there, but when he sees me, then he he's you know he gets weird. Why? Where, why? What is he? Doing? I don't know, dude. He just he's uh um I guess you know I don't know. I mean it's cool. It's cool. It's just no, there's something of, under it's, bubbling under that we're not uncovering. No, it's just kind of like I think he goes there. He goes there to kind of be by himself, mm -hmm. and then he sees me. I get excited. I start screaming sauna. So when what I what do you scream? What? I scream sauna, sauna. What? That's like my thing. That's your that's thing. That's your thing. Yeah. So when I walk in, that's how I am when I walk in this. And it's a Korean. It's a Korean. But yeah, you don't call your close friends there Chinese, though, right? Because it's Korean. No, I just scream sauna. Sauna. Yeah. So I see them. I walk in. I was there last night. I walk in, and then you know you take off all your clothes, and there's all the Asian men there, and I scream sauna, sauna, and then they look at back <laughs> at me, and they go sauna, sauna, and I'm like, guys, keep it down. You know, we're at the sauna. And then you start You're all going. naked. All these naked men screaming sauna at each other. Yeah. But okay. I started it. Oh, did, wow. I started it. So That's that your catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. Sauna at the Korean sauna. <laughs> so, I, but, so now they do it when they see me because they have an, a, 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 an affection for me because I'm like their home. How many man. naked guys are in one room? Um, well, it's a big walk-in area. It's got like a cold plunge. It's got a hot pool. It's got a couple steam. And it's got like, you know, last night we were all sitting there last watching night. the Laker game. Naked. Naked, yeah. Do you go sauna. every day? I, I go probably about three, four times a week. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, I love it. Just sitting naked with people you don't know. Pretty or you much. do know them. 
Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. And the there's name. a pool table, ping pong. <laughs> he says there's no, ping pong. No, there's pong. ping pong upstairs. Right. There's ping pong upstairs. No, but it's just a sauna. It's like, I also. It's not go just a sauna. There's ping pong upstairs. Okay, but that's upstairs. Um, it's but, part of the same establishment. Yeah. Is there he food? Doesn't use, he doesn't use it. I don't upstairs. go play ping pong. No, you, why would you do that? Yeah. Because you go upstairs and yell, ping pong, <laughs> ping pong. <laughs> 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 no, uh, is there food? It seems there's like no weird. food. There's no food. So what is it? How do you watch a Laker game in a sauna? Isn't well, there's steamy? the hot pool. No, no, no. There's the hot pool. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you sit in the hot pool. Mm -hmm. It'd be like if I was if we were sitting in a hot pool like this, and that TV right now is the Laker game. Is so it, it's, it's outside. Co it's is it co-ed? It's not co-ed. So how many men? How many? It's there you? could be anywhere from like. Three to, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20. 15 or 20 <laughs> naked men. Asian men. Well, you're not Asian. Yeah, but I'm me, and then they're all Asian. They're all Korean. Are you the only uh Pretty much American? the only white I person. I think hot yeah. tubs are gross. Yeah, I know. Well, but, that's okay. Yeah. Why do you do it? Is it a health? A health? Makes me feel good. I've been going to saunas for my whole life. Yeah, it started with my father at the Friars Club. You know, my dad would take me to the Friars Did Club. he whip you with leaves? Yes. No, that's the Russian bathhouse. So I go to that one, too. <laughs> so See, the Russian the bath thing. one I go to. It's, he yeah, talks about it all the time. Yeah, it's called a pleitza. Yeah. Ha! Okay. Thank it's, God. It's you the just best. Redeem me. She, she didn't know. No, I would go to a sauna yeah. with my father like that. Yeah. And we'd all be naked. All his friends would be naked. Yeah. And I would lie on the table. And, and they, they hit would you with so leaves. With soapy leaves. Yes. And it's the best. Ha! But, but you asked me why I do it, because it makes me feel good, and, and it's good for me. It goes cold plunge, it goes hot, it goes steam, it goes dry sauna. I mean, you know it's the most popular thing right now. I mean, Rogan's talking about it. Everyone knows sauna and cold plunges is the key to, like, I don't want to say youth, but, I mean, look at my skin. You look amazing. You know what I mean? I gorgeous. know. that's You're gorgeous. That's what I'm saying. Like, it helps with all that, and especially when you're traveling and touring for your back, it's great. So I love it. It's, you know, and then once in a while I'll get a massage upstairs. They'll whack me. Up. No, I'm just kidding. They won't <laughs> There's do no that. happy endings? No. Have you asked for one? No. It's just a normal. They do massages sometimes. You get massages where they walk on you. Do you have a, a significant other in your life right now? Just my dog. No, you're not dating. Mm-mm. Why? That was waiting a big for part. Your, waiting for your daughter. But that was a big part of your youth. There was always a, a hot, young you were going out with, I think the last time I was aware was you were going out with Kylie Minogue. Yes, that was a long time ago. That's the last time I was aware. Yeah, I've seen you since 20 years. Um, no, I just, um, I have, I haven't, um, I kind of like being alone. There's some, I've been alone for so long that I really enjoy my alone time. And also, um, I don't know, you know, I just, there's something about being alone. I don't like being alone. I, mean, I get lonely. But you, you don't. You're good with He's your not thing. alone. He's with 20 other guys in a hot tub every night. No. Oh. He has more company than you have. You're right. Yeah. And That's I have my dog, Buster, so he's cool. Do you travel with your dog? No, he's too big. What kind of dog is it? He's a lab chow husky. I got him during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So he was this big, and now he's, he's pretty big. big but he's, he's fucking awesome. But I think, you know, love, love is interesting because... Um, you know, we can get it from all different places, you know, and I think in life it's about what works best for you. You know, for me, I don't want to be in a situation that I can't be 100, 120 percent in, you know, and I'd rather not be in a situation uh, with a female being uh, married or with a girlfriend and all that unless I can dive 100 percent in. Do you think that's you because you came from a broken home? I was going to ask. Were you going to ask that? Yeah. Go ahead. My daughter no, it's asked okay. a question. Go ahead. No, you ask asked it. You asked oh, it. I should give it a Do you think that's because you came There's from a broken home? Good question. <laughs> I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, um, my father, you know, when he was uh, with my mom, he wasn't happy. He was, you know, wanting to be free and do his thing. And um, I love, I love, I don't know. I, I just... There's something about what we do, which that's my number one thing. And, you know, Comedy? until, yeah, until, exactly. Until I find, I think, someone that's like, yo, go do your thing. I mean, you're lucky you found, you know, your wife very early. She's yep. your best friend. Yep. She's your homie. She's yep. your ride or die. Mm -hmm. And in, 
until you know you find someone like that i don't think it just makes sense is it you, know, okay. you were looking for like you were looking at other actresses and people that were in the business and stuff do you think that had something to do with why you never found someone that you could see yourself with forever i don't know i think that i just like being i like being in bed by myself at night yeah you know when i'm just with my pillow my dog you know my phone my netflix you know there's something cool about just you know because if you're married you have a girl she, guess what she's right there you know, you know I mean? I'm married with two kids, and I still like being by myself in bed too. <laughs> no, some I like my alone. That's my what space. I'm saying. But some people but that are that. some people that are married and stuff, they um or or, or girlfriends, they have separate rooms, and that mm -hmm. works for them. I have a girlfriend of mine in Las Vegas. She's um, with her dude, and they have three kids, and he's got his room, and she's got her room. So you can do that too. But um, I don't know. It's like Ricky and Lucy. Oh yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they had they separate, had separate beds. beds. They weren't in separate rooms. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, anything can change. Mm -hmm. Any day it could Dating change. Dating on the road, is that hard? I don't really date on the road. Uh, you know, I don't really, and it's not like not I'm dating. looking, I'm, hooking up on the road. Yeah. I don't really, it's not. Those it's days. Not my, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, you know, you do two shows, you know, you sign, you take pictures afterwards, you just want to go to the, you know, the, the hotel, have a glass of wine, watch TV, relax. Oh my God. Yeah. Polly Shore grew up. Polly Shore became a gentleman. Mm. Polly Shore, on behalf of Mitzi, I'm really proud of you. Mm. I really am. As a human being, you mm. seem to have really evolved, buddy. I just, you know, uh, I, look at, I'm, I look at things half full. Um, oh, you're why? Why? Oh, yes, the positive. In life, yes, in life. You know, I mean, you know, when you lose your parents, you know, I lost my best friend Gary as well, and my my sibling stuff, and and you know, there's a lot of people that are woe is me, a lot of victims. Whoa. Who's Gary? Gary Garfinkel, one of my best friends. He ran Showtime, right, in the comedy department. You right. remember him? Yeah, yeah. He died. He, know. You know, he died. Yeah, he died about four years ago. He's one of my closest friends. Um, and, um, and you just realize when you turn f in your fifties, you're like, fuck, this is a wrap at some point. Like we're all g going in dirt. It doesn't, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I just try to look at what I have and not what I don't have. And the main thing is that I'm healthy. People always say, oh, your friends and your family are the most important for me personally. I don't believe that. I think your health is the most important. That's for me. Maybe for you guys, completely different. You know, the fact that I can get out of bed and walk. You know, I, go, I went to the gym this morning. I'm going to go work with my assistant at the house. Like, all these things. Because this is going to be a wrap. All of this shit's going to be a wrap. And some people, I just talked to my friend Kevin. His friend's got cancer. You know what I mean? So it's like, one day at a time, I have a saying that I heard a while ago. If you have one foot in the future, one foot in the past, you're shitting in the present. Because all we have is, is right now, you know, because a lot of this shit's going to go away. So it is. It just is. Well, I enjoyed this present. You're a present. You're a gift. Right. Thank you. You really are, Polly. And we're always here for you. And um, I've enjoyed you for the first from the first time I mm. saw you without even knowing who you were, seeing that kid spin mm. on the linoleum outside in the mm -hmm. line and uh, I, I owe you a debt, a debt of gratitude not only for you but for your family and what your mm -hmm. mother did for me I don't think I'd be sitting here yeah. today talking to you if I didn't run across your mother in my life yeah and uh, other, well, go ahead yeah yeah because um, and I know I was fucking around at the beginning um, but it's true at least that's what she told me is it true that you were going to go home mm -hmm. you're you're working at the store and mm -hmm. it wasn't happening right and you, well, can you tell us that story about the that, carpet that, thing. Well, that's it. I came from the carpet business. I came out here. I was engaged to be married to the girl that I'm still married to. Mm. We've been married for 43 years, her mother. Mm. And uh, it's amazing, by the way. That's thank you. I'm getting applause. <laughs> An applause. <laughs> One person. Okay. And, you know, I got, as soon as I came out here, you know, she put me on as a regular mm. and I got a couple of things and I became Diana Ross's opening act. Mm. And I did Merv and I did Mike. And, but that's not a lot of money. Mm. And I was doing uh, uh, Make Me Laugh, which was uh, a, a comedy game show. But then there was like nine months mm. of not you know, 
nothing, mm. like really nothing. And I said, okay, to my wife, I, let's go back. You know, mm. I gave it a shot. I'm young. Mm. I'm, I'm out here. We're 3,000 miles away from where I grew up or we know anybody where our family is. Mm. I'm not making a living. Let's go back. Back to Canada. Back to Canada and back mm. to a real job because mm. I didn't think putting a rubber glove on my head and acting like an idiot was a job. And I didn't, you know, uh, Mitzi was always there for me. And uh, unlike your parents' um, kind of experience, my wife was always my biggest fan, mm. loved going to the comedy store. She went every single I remember, night. Yeah. She was there every night and watched everybody and everything. And you and told me you only had enough money you would get a McDonald's, right? And split the McDonald's? Split it. or split yeah. And you were yeah. cool to perform in front of her. Right, you were okay to perform in front of your wife. Yeah, she. My was dad not, was the opposite, m but my wife wasn't never critical of it. In mm. fact, when even when I did badly, she was there to say, "You know what? They didn't know that was really funny, Howie. Mm. That was really good." Mm. So she kept me going when uh, the audience wasn't, and I wasn't, and whatever. So my my uh, wife has been always my biggest champion and cheerleader forever, and maybe that's you know, why we're still together. She has always believed in me even more than I believe in myself. Mm. So that being, and I'm thrilled that I don't go to bed alone every night and she's the one that's beside me and even gave me a co-host. Look what she's done. <laughs> Look what she did. This came out of my wife. Yeah. And, and a uh, producer. And a producer right there, <laughs> yeah. Alex. Yeah. My, my sperm is all over this room. <laughs> anyway. And on this couch too, right? I don't know. <laughs> well, you might, I might. No could be yeah. we don't know anyway <laughs> you're the best polly i wish you nothing but success i wish you continued success just happiness and yeah most of all about, as yeah. my grandmother used to say if you're not healthy you're not wealthy mm. so um thank you can i can i plug my album really please quick? plug your album do that sorry no don't apologize so, that's why you so shooting. this is um an album that you can only get on my website it's called polly shore and the crusties <laughs> and it's uh it's me and these old senior citizens playing all these songs that mean something to me we got a whole lot of love somebody got murdered celebrity skin all these kind of cover songs so i was in a band in las vegas i lived in vegas for two and a half years during the pandemic so i yeah. started this band and we just put it out and i'm really proud is of it is there any of this music is it downloadable is no it not play something? Yet. no oh. i'm selling bundles on my website so for so the it's limited edition bundles, so you okay. get like autograph photos and stuff like that. Who are these other guys in the band? Uh, we got Richard and we got Guido and Bill. You really got them? Yes. How were you able to get them? I don't know. Are they really old guys? <laughs> yes. How old are they? Um, I don't know. They're in like sixties. Where'd you meet them? Um, I met Bill at Starbucks, <laughs> and then we met the other guys at a place called uh, oh, what the fuck is it called? Oh, fuck, I'm so stupid. Um, it's called, um, uh, sand dollar lounge in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, me, um, just like you, I'm a, I'm a, a performer, whether it's singing or acting or modeling or whatever it is that we do. And, um, I thought it would be fun to, to start a band. So we played all over Vegas called Polly Shore and the Krusties. And this is our new album. And you there's can, not a video that anybody videotaped. Yeah, there's online? videos. If you go on, yeah. Yeah, can we go go list the please, last one yes, thing? So, and how last. do they get this album while we're doing it? So, what do we? What are they doing? Polly Shore and the Krusties. Uh, we got, we have bundles that we're selling on my uh, website for sixty dollars. They're limited edition bundles. Yeah. Here, let's play. Don't one play that one. That was no, a no. gnarly. Okay. Play. Uh, what? What makes it gnarly? Like. Well, it's "Rate Me" by Nirvana, so I don't want to play that. On okay, the show. something that we won't. Okay. Yeah, so this is the Beastie Boys. Back okay, in the go in the middle. Go in the middle. With the crusties. No, I want to hear the. They try to take us off the internet, but what happened, Norm? Oh yeah, we fought that. Yeah, we battled wow. back. We battled wow. back strong, folks. Yeah. Based off <laughs> of us battling back, what? it means we like to fucking what, Richard? We like to party. We like to fucking yeah. party. Like party. These are all old guys. You people like to party. It looks like fun. But here it's in Las fun. Vegas, fun. the like crusties like to party, and that's why we thought it was appropriate to do what song? <laughs> Living at home is such a dream. Easy boys. Your mom took away your best porno man. Bust it, bust it, feel bust it. You got him fine. That's little baby Larry right? David. He's tiny. He's a tiny yeah, he's old man. He's like four feet. Yeah, I found him at Starbucks. 
should go on AGT. I could bring them. I could bring them here if you want. You I would love to have the crusties. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Can we get the crusties coming up on our show? We'll have them play. Mm -hmm. yeah. a, do you have the capacity to plug them all in? And yeah, I would love to. You want to do a concert on my it podcast? It'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun. You're invited. Yeah. Uh, Polly Shore and the also, crusties are going to do an upcoming episode of the. Go ahead. Also, I'm the host of Jam in the Van podcast. I don't know if you're familiar, are you familiar with Jam in the Van? No. They're really cool. Put in Jam in the Van. They're really a cool site. You guys should check them out. Polly Shore and the Krusties play Jam in the Van as How well. How do they get that in the, while well, we're looking that up? How do they get that? How, How do they, they get, get that, that, that? His that, website. That, that the, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, so here's, uh, so, oh, cool. This, this one just, so this is my podcast. This is really cool. So I just interview musicians. So it's uh, at the studio in Mid City with Jam in the Van. And um, it's pretty dope. It's uh here, let's see her going to the ads really quick. Here we go. So it's um here we go. So it's me just interviewing musicians. Very hard because so this guy's got like a million followers an and he's an artist yeah, yeah. and, and, the radio, and I have comedians as my sidekick, you know. That looks good. Yeah. So fun. where do they get that? Wherever podcasts are available. Yeah. It's Jam in the Van. It's yeah, called it's jam. jam in the Van? Yeah. Your name's not on it? No, it's Polly Shore's Jam in the Van oh, podcast. Jam in the Van, okay. Because these guys have a lot of bands that are jamming in the what? Van. van. In the van, yeah. JTV, I see what you did there. Yeah, see? See, like MTV, like. Yeah, so it's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you like doing fun. podcasts? I do. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, cool. Love doing, I love doing Joe. Joe's yeah, great. Joe Rogan. I did, I did Joe. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so no, I love it. I think this is, a, um, like you said earlier, this is a great way that, that, you know, you can cut out the middleman and we can go straight to the fans and the people that, are liking our shit, but thanks well, for having me. Thanks for being there. I can't wait, and I, I want you to do a concert on Howie Mandel does stuff. I would love. A well, tell them they're they're watching right now. Norm Guido, Bill, Baby Bill, Norm Guido, and Baby Bill, and Richard, and Richard. You're all invited to do a, a you know a concert right here. We should do something where we do it live. Alex, we should do a live concert with some guests. We'll chat. We'll chat. We'll do we'll it. This talk is cool. about it. But yeah, and, you and can it, only buy these on the on the website polishore.com. Eventually, can you they'll get a be close on, up of that. Yeah, you want to zoom in on that? On his, you can't from that. Well, uh, eventually, yeah, they, did oh, they it. got They're it. Doing it. They got eventually, it. we'll be on Apple <laughs> Apple Music and Spotify. But I want to try to just send it to my fans, like the physical C, uh, CDs to them. So it's cool. It. This is a it. great CD. I'll leave it here. You guys should check it out. It's we pretty will. cool. We will. We will. And uh, go to howiemandel.com if you want any of our merch. I'm wearing merch. Oh, sick. Yeah, I got You We're want merch? Doing. How's Rotenberg doing? We text sometimes. He's doing great. Michael yeah. Rotenberg is my manager. And uh, you're, are you not with him? And BFF. I'm not. BFF. Yeah, he's my best friend. Anyway, uh, and he's her godfather. He is my godfather. Yeah. I got great pictures of you guys from back in the day. Okay, we're going to look at pictures, but until then, <laughs> until next time, go to HowieMandel.com. Polly Shore! Cool. That was great. That was fun. I know. You did, I think. <laughs> yeah.